As hunters, we need to reckon with a new and scary reality. Chronic wasting disease has been spreading rapidly around the country through our deer and elk herds, particularly in the last 10 years. If you live in an area that doesn't yet have CWD, trust me, you do not want it. CWD is 100% fatal to infected animals. It manifests very slowly and it can persist in the environment for years. To stop the spread of CWD by bringing the disease home with us, we're all gonna have to change some of our practices when hunting in CWD infected areas. To that end, watch this video coming up from my good friend Giannis Putellis, who breaks down strategies on how to debone and dispose of carcasses in CWD infected areas. This is a great tool to have in your toolkit and it will help stop the spread. Thank you. Hi, I'm Giannis Patelis from Meat Eater, and today I'm gonna to show you how to debone a deer in case you live or hunt in a place where you need to leave the bones behind for CWD reasons. I'll first start the process by skinning one whole complete side. So I'll skin the ham, skin the shoulder, skin her flanks and her ribs, all the way back over to her spine and skin it all the way up and expose her neck. When skinning, just pull the hide and just gently drag that knife. Once I have that done, I'll go and cut off the front shoulder. Then I'll cut off the ham or rear leg. Then I'll take off the back strap. And finally, I'll take off the neck roast. So to remove the back leg, find the ball joint, find your pelvic bone. It's usually just inside there. You can cut away a little bit. You can see the ball in there. Off the tendon. For the front shoulder, start right along the ribs and cut down in towards the ribs. And again, flaying until I reach the back strap, and then just take off the shoulder. Right to the backbone again. And that's it. Your back straps and your inner loins or tender loins, those also are, they come off the carcass deboned. There's no bones attached to them. So you don't need to worry about that. The spine, and then where the ribs end, there's a line here. I'll usually cut, find that line, the ribs end. You can see the back strap here and run that towards the back and then you can put your knife in right against the spine there you go one back strap there will be no deboning for the neck roll since you're basically deboning it as you take it off the carcass make a cut at the top of the neck down in towards the spine and you can start here at the by the esophagus or trachea and work your way up, or you can start at the spine and work your way down. One neck roast. Last but not least, you wanna debone the ribs. Pretty simple to do that. Just take your knife and trace the ribs on the insides. You'll get strips of meat that are eight to 12 inches long. Pulling the tenderloins. These really don't require a lot of cutting. Once you've removed the ham, the shoulder, the back strap, the neck roast, and rib meat from one side, simply flip the deer over and repeat the process. Once I have those pieces taken off of the carcass, I will then go to actually deboning the meat. So for the shoulder, you wanna find 
this ridge that runs like this off the scapula. Basically run your knife both sides of that ridge. You'll come up to the joint here. I usually go to the bottom and then wrap my blade around and then follow that flat scapula. Now on the shoulder, most of the meat, probably 90% of it is on this side of the scapula. There's not much muscle on the side that faces the body. And you're mostly trying to get this stuff off here. So here I've got the scapula freed. I'm going to come up to this joint and just sort of work around that joint. I find the next bone that's running to what I call her knee. I usually will cut this off clean here and then start again for the shank. Again, pretty easy to find the bone here and just cut the shank off. <laughs> and this shank meat, it's not quite as good if it's as it is when it's on the bone because you're not getting to cook it with all that marrow, but I'll still slow cook all this shank meat just like I would an Asabuco recipe. On the rear hand where I'll start is I'll connect the dots between the ball joint and the next joint down. Straight line right there. That's your femur. Basically straight down. You'll encounter that femur. You don't want to cut on the bone too much because you're going to dull your blade. Okay, so the femur is freed now. So now from this joint up, I'm basically just gonna separate the main ham here from this upper shank. The lines you're looking at are basically the, the connective tissue that's running in there. So if you're cutting along those lines, you're really not gonna slice through your roast or through your steaks. Here on the shank, start there. And trim the shank meat off of the lower leg. So there is one boned out ham, the two shank pieces. Now you can take this to your processor or you can take it home process it yourself. I'm just gonna put her into a garbage bag. The plastic's not gonna hurt her as long as I keep it cool. So I'm gonna take the garbage sack, put it inside of a cooler, put some ice around the garbage sack. I don't want my meat to get wet. And when I get home, I'll pull it all out and butcher it. Or you could take it to the butcher as is in a garbage sack.